Hey everybody, welcome back to Appify Your Business. This video is going to cover 10 essential functions that you should be using or considering when developing your AppSheet apps. So as I go through these today, remember that I will have links in the description below to the AppSheet documentation for each of these. So you can get even more details because there's going to be stuff I don't cover for the brevity of this video. The first function we'll cover is select. Now I already have a special video out just for select because it is a very versatile function. It allows you to essentially query data from any other table in your application. So this is very useful. And several other functions such as filter, lookup, and ref rows all use this in the background when computing those functions. So this is a good function to know. You should see a pop up in the top right corner of the video. You can click on that and watch the video specifically for select. Next, we have three functions in one uh, Boolean operations that consist of the and, or, and not functions. I put these together because they are Boolean functions. The output of these functions is always true or false. We'll jump into the app editor to show you. So using and um, as an example here, we could use and if we wanted to compare multiple conditions and check to see if all of those values are true. So if I had, maybe I wanted to check to see if the start date was equal to today. In addition to that, maybe I also wanted to have a second condition in there as well, where I wanted the status to be equal to complete. So I could put those, I could put those into this and function and then actually it's going to assess each condition within this. And you can have as many conditions as you want. I'm just showing two in this case. And all the conditions in here must be true. Now with or, that just means any of them can be true. So that actually it's just gonna check to see if any of these values are true. And then with not, you can add not and wrap not in any function, essentially, if you want the opposite to be true. Any formula you have where you're normally checking to see if it's true, but if you want it to be false, you would wrap that in a not function. And that's where not comes in in handy. It basically allows you to identify when a function or formula that you've created is false instead of true. So you just wrap that simply in a not, and then the opposite will be true. Next is in. In allows you to check for values in any list that you have in your data table, whether that's a list a column list or a list that's generated from the select function. Basically any list that exists throughout your application, you could take a value, whether that's a column value or a static value, and then use this function to check into that list to see if those values exist. Now within the syntax has two parts. The first part is the, the search value. And then the second part is the list that you want to search itself. So with an example, maybe I wanted, maybe I have a list of projects and I wanted to check to see if any of those projects are complete. What I can do is search for complete in a list of my projects with the status column. So what this is saying essentially is pull a list of all the statuses for the project. So then AppSheet has a list of all those statuses and then check to see if complete exists in any of those status. Next is split. Split is useful because it allows you to take a string, whether that is an enum list of comma separated values or long text or text fields. It allows you to convert that string of text using a delineator into a list of values that could then be used for with other functions such as in or upcoming functions that we haven't talked about yet, such as intersect. So a real quick example with split, say I have a string of text. So we could have apples, oranges, bananas, kiwis as an example. So I have a list here and this could be, but this is in a string form, right? So there's just a string of text. If 
I wanted to take that and turn that into a list of values for AppSheet to use as a list, first I would add, identify the delineator in this, which is going to be this comma space. That's the common example between them. So I will set that as the delineator for the second part of the syntax and then close that off. Then AppSheet will essentially take that string and turn it into, when we test this, turn it into a list of, of values that can then be parsed using um, other functions as well, such as index. So if I only wanted the second value from this list, now that's in a list form, I could use index and then pull the second value out, which would be oranges. You can see how oranges gets pulled out of there. So that's why it's split is useful because it allows your, your strings to become more versatile and to remove certain things from the string of text and repurpose them in other virtual columns or use them throughout your app. Next is concatenate. Concatenate is a very useful function. It allows you to combine multiple strings of text together into a single string. You know, this could be used to have multiple text columns together. So if you have certain views that maybe you wanted to cram more information into a certain field, you can create a virtual column that concatenates those values together so you can display them in one line of a certain view. So concatenate is fairly simple. Um, it, you're, you basically can choose column values and it's comma separated. So you could add as many values together, even static values. So you could place um, your own visual indicators, emojis, or anything like that into concatenate and then AppSheet will put them together as a single value that can be displayed in your application. In addition to the formula, what I typically use, the identical function because it's quicker, I could simply just add the values with and, and string them together with an ampersand. So this is quicker for me to do this since I don't have to wrap it into a function as I'm, I'm typing this. So I could just string together values with an ampersand and that's the exact same thing as using the concatenate function. Number six is if. If allows you to have conditional logic within your application and set up many different conditions and allow for more than one condition to be checked based in certain circumstances. So if you wanted, if for example, you really simply had a status of a task and you wanted conditions to be different when the status changes, then you could use if to have that consideration in your formulas to make your app even more dynamic. So with if, there's three different parts to this syntax. The first part is the condition to check itself. So for example, if I'm going to have a condition that I want to happen when the status is complete, then I can put that there. And then the second part is the condition or the value you want AppSheet to essentially compute or act on if that status condition is true. So this could be very simply a string of text. Maybe you wanted to have a virtual column that describes what's going on. And then the third part is the result if that's not true. So you can see this as an example, but you could use this anywhere. It's not just for strings of text. It could be different column references, different conditions to check, and certain situations. Next is switch. Switch is similar to if in that it's a logical operator that can be set, but it allows for more flexibility as well. So you're not having to deal with nested if conditions if you wanted to check for the same value in multiple uh, scenarios. So with switch, it, it operates a little differently than if in that the first value in your switch function is going to be the, the condition you want to check or the value you want to check. So, you know, we had status as an example. We could check the status column and have AppSheet retrieve the status value from that column here. And then the next parts of the syntax are, are follow on pairs that result in whatever the value of that status is and then the result that the formula is going to produce. So, for example, if it's complete, we can have text here that says this is complete. And then if it's pending, 
we could say this is pending and we could keep going with this if we had other statuses. So if it's delayed, we'd say this is delayed and you can keep going with this. So this, this kind of illustrates how this is a little bit more flexible in some situations than an if then statement, because you're able to check for multiple conditions without having to deal with nested uh, if functions. And then lastly, the final entry in the syntax after those pairs is the catch-all. So you could say, you know, error, or, you know, whatever you would want to put. If none of these other values were assessed, there's going to be some catch-all value that AppSheet will display as a result of that function. Next is unique ID. But unique ID allows you to generate an eight-digit alphanumeric key when you're creating new records. So this is absolutely important if you have a key field in your application and you don't have a clear key that can be naturally defined with the data, you could generate a unique identifier with unique ID set as the initial value. The syntax for this is super simple in that it's just unique ID and it'll generate this eight digit alphanumeric character. In addition to this, you could also have a longer string as well to make a universally unique identifier. And what this is essentially just a proved standard for a universally unique ID in that there's more characters here to make it less likely of there being a collision. And you would definitely want to use this if you're dealing with any apps at a large scale. This ensures that you don't have the rare case where if you're using a smaller string of text, randomly generating the same key for a specific record. In either case, this is pretty rare if you ever have a duplicate. We're talking about one in a trillion type probabilities, but you could definitely use the longer UUID just to be sure if you're, you, you are building apps that deal with thousands and tens of thousands of individuals. All right, as we round up the bottom here next, we have context. So I have context in here because context is, is a fairly versatile function. There's a lot of different ways to use this. The way I use context mainly is to check to see and compare what view type I'm in when I'm using formulas. So this allows me to have fields that show up in different views or view types without needing to manage each individual view. Type. So for example, one I use a lot is with detecting whether a field's in a form view. There's a lot of fields when you're creating a form, you may not want to show the user because it's either read only or you're auto populating the data in the background. So you don't need to explicitly show it to the user. So I will use context view type and then check to see if that would be, uh, make sure it's not equal to form view type. So that's just one example. And this, this saves you from needing to manage the form layouts individually. If you have multiple forms tied to a single table, it makes your app less complex if you know that certain fields you'll never want to include uh, in the form itself. So the view type is one aspect to that. You can also compare certain view names as well. You can, so you can check to see if the view name is project, for example. In addition to context, there's also host that could be used as well. Host allows you to check to see whether it's, um, host allows you to check to see what device, what type of device someone's using. And there's, there's three different values that you can consider. And those values are device. And that would be some kind of mobile device running the, the Android or iOS app. Then there's browser, which will detect whether someone's using a web browser in the application. And then lastly, there's server as well. So anything that's processed on the AppSheet server side, you can also detect that as well to determine whether um, functions get used or are valid based off of that um, scenario. There's also a couple of additional functions too, such as the ability to pull the device ID from the individual. So you could log device fingerprints from your users and also app name. And lastly, we have intersect. So intersect is one of the more advanced functions, but it's also very useful if you need to compare two lists, check if there's anything that is identical between two lists in your application. 
And that's very simply, the syntax for this is intersect list one and then list two. And the output from this intersect will be the list of all values that are the same in both of those lists. So then you could take that a step further for, you know, either using those values in a list format or maybe counting those values to check to see if there's a match, you know, greater than zero. A lot of different options at your disposal for this, but just remember that the syntax for this is just comparing two different lists. If you want to check to identify and extract the values that are the same in both of those lists. So with that, that wraps up this video, the 10 essential functions in AppSheet. Remember, I'll include links to all these functions in the AppSheet documentation so you can look up even more details about these functions when you're building your applications. As always, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.